this short video, I'm going to show you how to use a musical coding platform called EarSketch. The video is going to be broken up into three parts. Part one, I'm going to show you how to navigate to EarSketch, how to create an account, and how to get ready for the next step. Part two is going to be the EarSketch tutorial, um, showing you how to use the platform. Um, and then part three is going to be the additional tools, which something might be helpful for your particular project. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up a web browser. EarSketches uses modern browsers, which is typically Firefox, Chrome, and the advanced browser of uh, Microsoft. What you're going to want to do is once your browser loads, you're going to want to go to earsketch.gathe. EC.edu. So it's EarSketch Georgia Tech.edu. This platform was put together by Georgia Tech University in Atlanta. So once you do that, you hit enter. It's going to redirect you to a landing page that looks like this. Um, if you're a teacher, there's wonderful resources right down here about teaching materials. But for us and our particular use, we're just going to go straight to start coding. Now, once you go to this, it's going to load the platform. That will be EarSketch. This is what we're going to use to program our music. So now that we've navigated to EarSketch, you're taken to the tutorial. And it is beneficial to walk through the tutorial, so I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't suggest that you just skip it. So the first thing is, is that you can define what type of programming language you'd like to use when you're in EarSketch. You can use Python or you can use JavaScript. For the most part, I'd recommend that you go with Python, especially if you're not familiar with JavaScript. All right? Or if you're new to it, don't change anything, just keep it at Python. All right? So we're going to click Start, and it's going to give us a little walkthrough of EarSketch. This window right here is it's showing you our code editor platform. This is where you're going to be really making your music. All right? And it does, it's done with a number of numbered lines over here on the left-hand side. All right? And one thing that's really important, you see where it says add sounds right here and these lines above it? You're not going to want to put anything above these lines right here. All right. All of your editing that you're going to be doing is really after the add sounds. Okay. So we click next. Now, if I'd like to run my code or compile my code, because this is not super duper easy to figure out what's going on here, especially the first time you look at it. Right. So I'm going to click on run. And right up here in the digital audio workstation window, as I believe what they call it, um, you'll see that some stuff is run. All right. So I'm going to click next and it's going to show me this is a preview of our music. And if it'll let me, well, you can see right here we have various tracks, right? And these tracks are represented right here in your lines of code. All right. If you run into any errors or you don't do some properly, You'll notice that down here at the bottom, there'll be a red line. It will tell you exactly where the issue is with your liner code, and I'll show you that in a bit. All right? If I'd like to play my music, the way that I do that is I go right up here in the top corner and press that little play button. Pretty simple. Now, the nice part about this particular platform is that it has a number of resources already available for you. All right? If I click on this little switch right here, which is a slide button, it will slide the content manager out here. All right? There is a bunch of content already here for you, and I'll go through that in a moment, all right? If I wanted to add sounds to your code, right here, you just go right here. There's a number of different genres for you to use. What I would recommend that you do is you think about the uh, mood that you'd like to uh, convey when you're building your music and stick to those kind of genres, all right? You may find some other stuff in there, but you don't want your, your music to be this just massive stuff that you've just thrown in there because you like those particular sounds. Those sounds have to go together and work together in order for it to sound nice, all right? So this is your content editor, and we'll come back to it in a moment. Now, when you save your code, this is obviously after you've created an account, and we'll go through that in a moment as well. To the right of sounds is scripts, all right? Your scripts are the various... Think of them as files. They're going to list right here. And I'll show you, again, that in a bit more time. Now, since we're just students, we don't need to read the curriculum. You can just slide that window over there and get back the extra real estate to do your coding. Now, we have created, and we're all done with the end of the tour, all right? So I'm going to close that. And if we'd like to create a new 
uh, script or a new document, so to speak. You click right here, and we're going to give it a name. We can name it test, test1, Python language. I hit create. You see it shows up right there, all right? But before we start go any further, what I would recommend that you do is you create an account. The way that you create an account is up in the top right-hand corner. It says create reset account. I click on that button. I'm going to go register a new account. Now, I already have an account. What I would suggest that you guys do is you come up with a unique user ID. What I would suggest is because this is a work product for school is I would suggest that you use an appropriate uh, username. Maybe try your student ID number at lcps.org or something like that. Come up with a password that you're going to remember. And then finally, you can add your email address. It is optional. What I would suggest that you do, though, is that you do add your email address. And the reason I say that is if you forget your password or for some reason you're locked out of your account, if you hit try to reset your account, it's not going to know how an email to send it to. All right. So just be mindful that if you do not provide an email address, there's a, a possibility that you get locked out of your account. All right. And then you click create account. Since I've already done that, I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to log into my account. Now, I've logged into my account, all right? And I have some leftover music here from something else, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back right here. I'm going to click on test one, which is the one that I created a little bit earlier. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some music. First, you notice that there's no music here, so I don't know why this is showing up. Oh, wait, yes, I do. It's because it's previously there. If I hit run, it will clear everything out because it's using this script down here. Now, you can adjust your window sizes if you'd like. You can see how I'm adjusting mine, all right? Make ones a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Now, <coughs> you'll have to excuse me. I'm not feeling well. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some music to my script right here. First thing I want to do is all of this text, as I said earlier, you're not going to want to mess around with. You're going to want to start basically on line 12 right here where you add your music. Now, I'm going to go to my sounds. Now, there's really two ways that you can add stuff to your uh, script. The first way is via text. So you can just type it in, and you have to type the right thing in, but you can just type it in, and it will compile it and, and, and play the music for you. Or if you're more familiar, say you've used Scratch or something like along those lines, you can turn block modes on. You'll see right here, there's a little slider. If I turn block modes on, it may look a little bit more familiar to you. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use Fit Media. So I'm going to click Fit Media. I'm going to drag it to line 12. And now I'm going to find some music that, that I like. So let's say, for example, I'm going to stick to particular genres. So let's say I'm going to start with, let's say, Electro. All right? And now I click off of that. You can see you can have multiple genres selected at a time. And let's say, for example, I want to preview or hear some music. I click here. And I don't know. Let's, let's see what this music sounds like. Okay, so let's say, for example, I wanted to put this music in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, rather than, you know, clicking and typing, you see right here where it says file name? Make sure file name is highlighted, and your, your mouse pointer is in there, right? It's highlighted like that, nice and green, or purple. And I'm going to simply hit, watch this. I'm going to click the paste to editor. If I click on that, you notice it automatically put the text in right there. Now what I need to do is I need to tell it what track number, all right? And what I would suggest is each one of your sounds that you bring in, you put it on a different track number right, to keep track of these things. So because this is the first thing I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in track one. I want it to start at measure one and end at measure, we'll say, five. All right. Now, if I've done everything properly, what I can do is I hit run my code. And up here in my window, my music shows up. So if I hit play. I guess I picked a different one, but you guys get the point. Now, if I'd like to add more music, all right, I can do the exact same thing. I search for more music, I add it, I drag the fit media over, the box over, add the file name, tell it what track to be on, what's the, when do I want to start, when do I want to end. Now, if you're like me and you prefer using text, this is the way that you go about doing it. Kind of actually give you a template for it right here already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit return and I'm going to type in fit 
media with a capital M, and I'm going to put parentheses. You know, it gives me the ends parentheses already. It's recognizing that I'm going to put something in there. So now let's say I wanted to add some different music. So I'll scroll down here, and we'll say edgy lead. I don't know what that is, but let's see. <coughs> All right. Not bad. Let's say we wanted to add that. So I'm going to click on this, and it puts in my title. I'm going to hit comma. Uh, what track do I want it on? We already have a track one, so let's do track two. I'm going to hit comma, space. When do I want it to start? Let's say we want it to start at measure three and end on measure five. Now, notice it doesn't show up right away. I have to compile and run my code. And if I've done everything properly, there's my music. No, nothing showing. Oh, that's because it doesn't start until measure three right there. So if I rewind it and I hit play. And you can hear it there in the background, all right? So that's how you're going to go about adding the uh, music, the sounds, to make your song. Now, later on, it saves automatically. If I want to come back to this, I can simply go to scripts. And you can see test one is right here, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I want to scroll down, and I'm going to actually add, show you guys a little bit different. Now, this is something that I worked on earlier. Now, Notice that it doesn't change your code. You're up here in your digital audio working station. You have to hit run in order for the text to match the uh, digital audio workstation. And give it a second, it'll show up. All right. And what I wanted to show you here was some of the more advanced functions that are in uh, this. All right? And what I'm specifically talking about, I don't know why my code's not showing up. That's weird. If I hit play. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I got, finally got my code to show up by hitting the play button. What I wanted to show you here was this particular effect. All right. So effects, so sometimes we don't want things to be super duper loud. We just want them to be playing softly in the background or increase in volume. All right. The way that I do that is by adding an effect. All right. The effects, any of the things that you can do in uh, ear sketch are right over here on the right-hand side under API, all right? So you'll notice earlier on we did fit media, which was right here, and if I scroll down, fit media. And it even tells you how it works. So it says file name, so we can say fit media, there's the file name right here. And then the next thing, next number, it says track number, start location, and location, right? That's what it says right there in fit media. Now, if I go to effects, Right here, this is this says set effect. So I scroll down, find set effect, and it's one of these two right here. I'm guessing it's probably let me see track effect. It's this one probably right here. Set effect here. So I have track number two, effect type, volume gain, and then parameter right there. So I want this to slowly get louder, track two to slowly get louder. Now, one of the nice things I can do is I can only listen to track two if I want. So if I just click on this little S right here, solo, it mutes out all the other tracks, which is one of the good reasons as to adding all of your music to separate tracks. And I'm going to reset it. And what you'll notice is you'll hear the music get louder, very, very subtly, but it'll get louder over time. So that is a way that you can add an effect to some of your music. Now, I personally am not very musically inclined. So what I'm going to show you is how to add um, beats to your music, all right? So in this particular case, if you go down here, you see where it says fills, all right? Um, and I have some fills. So I have fill A, B, and C. And you can see this 0, dash, dash, 0, dash, 0 is actually the beat of the music. And I'll give you a point here, all right? So right here, make beat three is on track three. So if I unmute that and I look at track three right here, all right, now I'm only looking at track three. These are the beats right here. And believe it or not, you look here at the end, it's four in a row, two, two spaced out, one. Four in a row, two in a row, two spaced out, one. And now, watch this, if I start right here, I hit play, it's going to play the snare drum in this particular fill A beat.
So you can see it actually played this beat right here, all right, with the snare drum on track three for Phil A. So those are some of the effects that you can do. There's a number of different things. As I said earlier, I'm not very musically inclined, so I don't know how to do all of these things. But what I have given you here is more than enough to get you started on developing your uh, music for uh, your class.